I'm Guy from Park Cameras, and we're here at the Burgess Hill store for Wildlife Day. So wildlife photography is a super popular type of photography. More and more people are pointing their lenses at the natural world. So we have dedicated this whole day to wildlife. We've got talks from pro photographers David Newton and Luke Massey. We've got a macro session going on with all kinds of interesting creepy crawlies to photograph with macro lenses and experts on hand to help you make the most of your time. We've got some really cool birds of prey here and we've set up some great telephoto lenses so you can capture some great photographs. And we're lucky enough to have loads of brands here on site who have brought their newest and best kit for you to try out. Sony, who's going to talk us through his picks of wildlife photography and what he'd suggest for a beginner. Brilliant, thanks Gareth. Yeah, we had a great day here at the wildlife uh, event that you've put on, which is uh, fantastic, so thanks for that. Yeah, um, getting into wildlife, there's a huge amount of uh, systems you can uh, get into. Obviously with the Sony system we have two formats, we have full frame, we have APS-C. With the full frame cameras we have a variety, one of them is the uh, A7R, one, two and three, and with resolution um, you've got big pixel content. So when you're shooting uh, birds, for example, in the sky and you need to crop in, then the largest sensor pixelation, pixels then will allow you to, to crop in and, and retain all the details. So a landscape photographer would use a, an A7R, for example, because when they're cropping in, the detail's still there. Same with wildlife. Sure. Um, and then, of course, what you've got with our new systems now is the ability to lock on and accurately focus uh, with both face detection and contrast AF. So the two pieces of technology work very closely together. So, you know, there's, there's, there's an, uh, an amazing amount of uh, kit that can be used. Um, we've got two varieties of lenses here. So uh, we've got a 70 to 200 f4. Sure. Um, and if you then kind of compare the two together, this is a 100 to 400 uh, f4.5 uh, to 5.6. Uh, very different focal lengths, but uh, we have two versions of the 70 to 200. Uh, a G Master version like this one, which is a little bit bigger. Obviously faster, but sh uh, sharper, but um, price is, is very different. But you can see in your hand the difference in weight and size is, is, is very, uh, very clearly different as yeah, well. Um, uh, what a lot of people don't actually talk about um, a lot at shows is the near end, so the macro side, um, and the ability to then do, uh, we always associate wildlife with zoom lenses and birds and all that kind of stuff, but it's also macro. So we sell a variety of lenses uh, in the macro side that are, again have that traditional sharpness, centre quality, uh, really good blurred backgrounds so you can get really good close-ups to insects and birds etc. So yeah. Um, yeah, so there's a huge variety of Sony kit that you can use to get, to get yeah. into wildlife photography. Thanks very much. Pleasure. So hello guys, uh, my name is Bruno and I'm from Nikon uh, and I'm here today to demonstrate some lovely uh, products for you. Uh, so what we brought here today is probably as you can tell, uh, the focus is a lot on the D850. Okay. Now the D850, as some of you may know, it's a 45 megapixel full frame uh, digital SLR from Nikon. And it's particularly good for a wide range of things, but we find that it's very, very good for wildlife uh, because you've got 45 megapixels, so you can crop your image right in because as a, as a wildlife shooter, the main thing that you might find is that you're never close enough. But with this amount of resolution, you can get right down into your subject. Not only that, the D850 has exactly the same focusing system as you might find on our flagship camera, the D5, which we also do have on show over here. And then combining that high-end focusing system with the 45 megapixels and the speed that we were able to add to it, doing seven frames a second in camera, we're able to achieve a very, very capable camera uh, for wildlife that a lot of pro um, 
and some consumer um, shooters might like. Uh, we also have the 200 to 500 here on display. We've got one here and one here by our D5. That's a really, really good range to be. It's 5.6 constant and it's a zoom, so it allows you to go from very close to very far quite easily, whereas you might not be able to do that with a uh, certain number of primes. If you were looking to get into wildlife, I'd probably be looking at something like a D3400. That's our entry level DSLR. It's capable of doing five frames a second uh, in full continuous autofocus with raw support. So that allows you, that's basically unrestricted um, well, shooting for, for, for wildlife. And if you pair it with something like our AFP 70 to 300, you're going to get super fast focusing. You're going to get right into your subject uh, and it's going to be extremely quiet, which might disturb some forms of wildlife. So you might want to pick something like this up. It's a very, very affordable price as well, about £329. Uh, together with the 3400, it's probably the ideal uh, started package for uh, any aspiring wildlife shooter. We're here with Carol from Panasonic, um, who's going to talk us through some of the best products for wildlife photography and something that she'd recommend for a beginner starting out. Yeah, so we've got. Um the, this is a fantastic show for us because with all of the with the birds here today and stuff it's been fantastic the beauty of the cameras we've got here for wildlife is that they really are hand holdable and that's one of the really key features so the G9 for wildlife photographers the G9 is just the most amazing interchangeable lens camera micro four thirds system but it's small and light, but it has six and a half stops of stabilization. Now that means on its own, before we even get to the lenses. So that means that I can hand hold this lens. This lens is our new, brand new Leica, uh, one, uh, 50 to 200, which is a 100 to 400, f2.8 to 4. It's tiny. This lens I can hand hold, I can walk around with, um, image stabilisation means that I can hand hold it right out to the 400mm but I can also put a 1.4 adapter or a 2 times adapter on it and still hand hold. This is our new compact and this actually is not a beginner's wow. camera but it's a beautiful camera. Yeah. One inch sensor but most importantly it's a 15 times optical zoom. That's impressive. That's, that's very, that is, impressive. that is very, very, <laughs> we were the only manufacturer to be able to put a 10 times zoom on a one inch sensor when we did okay. the TZ100. Yep. So we decided to put a 15 for the TZ200. Sure. We're still the only manufacturer that can do even a 10. So if you want a tiny viewfinder, if you want a tiny little camera, that's a really good option. Okay. So yeah, it's been fantastic. We've had lots of fun. We've been photographing the birds. We've been helping people photograph yep. the birds. We've had a ball. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you've got any questions about something you saw in the video or about anything to do with wildlife photography, pop a comment down below. And we'll do our best to get back to you as soon as possible. If you didn't manage to get down, we've got another wildlife day coming up later in the year. So stay tuned to Park Cameras for more info on that. Thanks very much.